good morning good evening uh, we are a global village so somewhere there is a good morning somewhere there is a good evening somewhere there is a good night uh, we are discussing some of the issues related to hiv management uh, currently as all of us know that a new drug which has come uh, is not new means not very new it has come almost 5 years back but in programs all over the world in last 2 or 3 years it is called dolutegravir and the uh, previous regimen of three drug regimen which was called tle that is tenofovir lamivudine and ifavirenz where ifavirenz is exchanged uh, with dolutegravir so tle has become tld uh, tld there are a lot of advantages the pill is very small as compared to tle uh, the depression related to ifavirenz suicidal tendencies related to ifavirenz early morning uh, headedness or uh, lack of concentration while driving so all those issues are taken care of with dolutegravir most important uh, with dolutegravir is a very robust drug uh, it is uh, uh, robust in two sense one is very fast acting and secondly it is uh, uh, is uh, resistance profile is very good because being a new drug it was not used earlier uh, hardly uh, not even 1% people are registered to this uh, new drug and therefore what happens is once you start person on tld regimen within 2 to 3 months that person become undetectable and that is our entire goal currently making hiv positive person undetectable and undetectable is untransmittable so the greatest prevention can be achieved by making hiv positive person undetectable and i think that is uh, no other better drug than dolutegravir is available uh, globally however whenever such new treatment comes new drug comes they will have their own associated adverse effects and one of the associated adverse effect with dolutegravir is weight gain and on an average within a year person gains uh, 5 kg weight when we say average means somebody gets maybe 2 kg somebody may get 8 kg but average is 5 kg weight gain after an year or so the weight gain gets stabilized in a country like india a uh, weight gain is not a problem weight gain is basically a status symbol so uh, our patients are so happy that they come back sir i never gain weight what did you do what kind of medicine you have given i gain 5 kg weight 8 kg weight so not only the patient patients entire family feel so uh, elated that uh, this doctor has done wonder and my uh, husband or my brother or my wife uh, uh, has gained the weight but apart from weight gain there are associated complications of weight gain and they are ncds so non communicable diseases and in the non communicable diseases yes uh, because of weight gain there is obesity hypertension diabetes and we have seen a lot of people getting diabetes once they are put on tld uh, when we say lot means it is not 100% but 10 15% 20% people are getting diabetes where diabetes has not been in the family in case where there was a family history of diabetes and it was not manifested now till now but with dolutegravir it get manifested faster so that is a major issue uh, what actually clinician should do whenever actually we have been doing this uh, uh, ever since we started art almost 20 years back 25 years back 24 years back we have been telling people with hiv to have a good uh, uh, life with good exercises morning walk yoga and that will take care of lot of issues so had this been done earlier by all the clinicians i think whether you have a dolutegravir or dolutegravir that weight gain will be taken care of uh, with the help of uh, exercises uh, cycling yoga swimming so ask people to do that so once they uh, become habituated to that kind of healthy life then that weight gain uh, will not be so much it may be marginally one or two kg or so however we need to keep on watch and uh, look at uh, how do we work up because on one hand we want a robust drug we want a uh, drug with a very good uh, good excellent uh, resistance profile uh, we want a drug which can be combined in uh, three in one combo, uh, combo which is uh, uh, str or single tablet regimen a smaller drug uh, without much of other life threatening side effects so under that situation there will be some adverse effect we need which we need to uh, accept and till another option comes there is a good option which is raltegravir but it has to be taken twice cost of raltegravir is much more it is not combinable as a str uh, it is not available as a str combination so dolutegravir gets upper hand 
Now, I would like to touch upon two other issues. Number one uh, is tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is a very common infection in uh, developing countries, including India. Uh, it is whether HIV there or not there. So tuberculosis is anyway common. But with HIV, one of the most common comorbidity is tuberculosis. And that can come when the immunity is poor or when the immunity is good or changing the immunity. So sometime it can come as, uh, as soon as you start ART, uh, you can get uh, 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 what you call uh, 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 tuberculosis of lungs, particularly a water filled lesion called tuberculosis, uh, pleural effusion. It can come gland tuberculosis. And if there was already manifesting tuberculosis uh, in brain, it can have a uh, what is life threatening issues. And uh, this is uh, possible. And tuberculosis also can come when there's a poor immunity. But in that scenario, gland tuberculosis and pleural effusion is less common. Miliary cox is more common. Extrapulmonary tuberculosis like abdominal cox is more common. Uh, fluorid bilateral tuberculosis is more common. So we need to uh, guard with tuberculosis. The problem with tuberculosis is that uh, even in India, which is called a uh, pharma power of the world, we have only four or five companies that are manufacturing anti-TB drugs. And they are coming under the NCCP, that is a national uh, price control order, uh, NPCO, uh, National Pharma Price Control Order. And under that, the cost of medication for ART, uh, anti-TB drug, they are governed by government of India. The costs are so low that by producing those drugs, those pharma companies are losers, not gainers. So only two or three companies which have a commitment to control tuberculosis, they are continuing and they are making losses in manufacturing anti-TB drug. So under this scenario, there will be a severe shortage of anti-TB drugs. And you can imagine if there is a severe shortage of anti-TB drugs in India, then it will be shortage globally. Second line TB drugs are also in short supply. And we need to safeguard the interest of both the industry as well as the patient. So governments will have to come to the rescue of this situation where tuberculosis drug, drug will vanish from market or pharma companies will no longer be interested in manufacturing tuberculosis, you know, anti-TB drugs. The third issue I'm tackling is basically hepatitis B or viral hepatitis. Uh, in viral hepatitis, there's hepatitis C and B. Hepatitis C is not vaccine preventable. But hepatitis B is 100% vaccine preventable. Government of India since 2011 incorporated hepatitis B vaccination as part of childhood immunization program, which is along with polio, triple, measles, uh, rubella, even hepatitis B vaccine is given. It's a pentavalent vaccine in a 5 in 1 vaccine is given in injectable uh, form. So in that sense, any children or anybody who is born after 2011, they will be covered with hepatitis B vaccination. But there are several people who are vulnerable to hepatitis B. They are not covered by hepatitis B vaccination. And the vaccines are so cheap. I think if the bulk supply is there or bulk buying is there, in one US dollar, you can buy three doses of hepatitis B vaccine. And three doses are required for lifetime. But what happens is all of us, uh, including um, HIV specialists, we have become tubular vision. When we talk about HIV, we do the test for uh, triple H, that means HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C. These tests are done in all uh, integrated counseling and testing centers. These tests are done in all ART centers. The tests are done in all STD clinic or pregnancy clinic. They are called triple H. After doing triple H, if uh, other two H are found ne negative, like hepatitis B or hepatitis C, we are not ad advocating hepatitis B vaccine there, there and then. And we keep on doing triple H tests at the time of surgery, at the time of blood transfusion, at the time of pregnancy. So, triple H has become such a common thing that you go for even tooth extraction, triple H will be done. But at the same time, we are not advocating hepatitis B vaccine even to those people which are hepatitis B negative. So much so that even people from medical community, surgeon, obstetrician, gynecologist, anesthesiologist, which are exposed day in and day out to hepatitis B, they are not vaccinated fully. So, that kind of awareness about hepatitis B vaccination is not there. And I think we should do that. Uh, it's better late than never. We should start vaccination of hepatitis B in mass. So we can prevent. Currently, if you see, if HIV is controlled to some extent and hepatitis B is growing, 
it has outnumbered uh, HIV cases. And though the chances of hepatitis B positive person ending up with fulminant cirrhosis or dying of uh, liver cancer is rare, but in that percentage, if the number of uh, cases are very high, even that small percent will result in millions of deaths. So I think we should prevent those preventable deaths uh, due to hepatitis B and we should start um, uh, advocating hepatitis B vaccine as early as possible, both to the entire community, to risk taking community, as well as the, to the medical community. Uh, to give you just a brief uh, uh, comparison between HIV, hepatitis C and hepatitis B, if somebody is infected with all three viruses, the chance to pick up HIV is 0.3%, that is three in thousand in one single sex, which is unprotected with HIV positive person. It can go up to 1% in MSM uh, sexual activity. But if you talk about hepatitis C, it is 10 times more transmissible. So it becomes uh, from 0.3%, it becomes 3%. So hepatitis B, uh, C is 10 times more transmissible than HIV. If you talk about hepatitis B, it is 100 times more transmissible than HIV. So with a single sexual contact with a hepatitis B positive person, the person's chance to pick up hepatitis C is 30%, right? 0.3% HIV, 3% hepatitis C, and 30% hepatitis B. And similarly, 30% uh, syphilis. So the syphilis and hepatitis B are highly transmissible uh, infections, virus or bacteria, and we should be able to control them, uh, particularly hepatitis B with hepatitis B vaccination. Thank you.